And um, Jill, I'm so, so grateful that you are my friend and that I met you on Clubhouse. I love every time you come in here and share, just like Dr. Connor, who's golden, and you are golden too. And with that, I'm going to pass the mod. Let's roll with the punches, baby. Roll with the punches. <laughs> wow. You know, Tony gave me permission to share my punch story with you today. He said, share the story, man. It's not meant to be kept. And then, uh, you know, so the perspective I'm going to bring today started with Jill, you know, where, where she did say a lot of times you don't have control over a lot of the setbacks that come our way. And I will have to say, like, clear back in, like, 1995, you know, got married, had three children, went through a divorce in 95. I, that was the worst thing that could have happened to me. However, I wasn't in, like, this world yet. I hadn't been in real estate. I hadn't gone through personal growth and becoming a coach and, and really in-depth understanding what all that meant. So from 1995, I'm going to take you up to 2015. I'm going to take you through a timeline really quick because I know we got a lot of great people on stage. So take notes because there's going to be a test at the end of this. No, I'm kidding. Um, but, you know, from 1995 to 2015, I really did feel invincible. Uh, I mean, I got in real estate in around 1995. And I just felt like everything was going well. I never really looked at things as setbacks, even though I know I probably had them. Uh, the divorce was a big one. Uh, it was just something I never, ever wanted to experience because all my aunts and uncles and pop mom and dad had all been through that. But I'll take you up to 2015, where I really, like at this point in real estate, I've been coaching people. Now I understand, you know, better all this stuff that we talk about in this room. So... We're going to roll with the punches here and, and see how we keep score because this roller coaster ride gets kind of crazy from 2015 to today. So 2015, lose a spouse. I mean, that is probably one of the most major, major setbacks. That, that one beat out the divorce like in a big way. And we had been married for 20 years, business partners growing our business together. So major setback. Setback gets one point right there. 2016, I write a book with Michael freaking Gerber. Are you freaking kidding me, right? E-Myth real estate agent with the the, the Mr. Guru himself, Michael Gerber. Point for uh, comeback. Woohoo! We're even up here. But that was like a major one. And, and I actually felt really bad that Sonia didn't get to enjoy that ride with me because it was what we did over those 20 years that made that book possible. So 2016, I meet my future wife. Don't know it yet, but that's a comeback. We're going to give comeback two to one right here. So that one I want to say, man, you got to get out of your comfort zone. When bad things are happening, you have to get out of your comfort zone so that you're always pushing yourself out of your comfort zone to be above comfort level so that when something bad happens like losing a spouse, it actually knocked me down to comfortable which allowed me to see my wife walking past, my new wife walking past me. Otherwise, I would have missed it, right? So stay out of your comfort zone there, a little, little side lesson. 2017, I partnered with this the largest team in our office, and we're expanding our real estate businesses. We've melded them together. We're expanding across, across the country. Woohoo! come back. Number three, we're, we're going up here. 2018, July 4th, I get married. Come back. Another score. We're up, we're up to four on comebacks. 2018, all the teams, the expansion teams that we built around the country, we had built about six teams and they're leaving left and right, going out the back door. There was no value that the partnership that I joined was really bringing to anybody. It was all smoke and mirrors. And I'm realizing at this time, so setback, major setback right there, hitting me hard. 2018, November, I buy my new house, come back, woohoo, we're up to five. Meet my wife, you know, uh, that was her like dream home. Well, also at that time, I realized this is a really bad partnership. People are bailing out. I realized this contract I signed is not good. Um, I'm screwed. My business of 20 years selling 100 homes a year has dropped to 30 sales that year. And they are taking every ounce of income that's coming in for the next two months. And have you ever thought about moving into a new house and not being able to make your house payment for the first two months you live in the house and you're with your new 
yeah, future wife. I mean, it was talk about setback. I'm like sunk. I, I'm out of business. I'm in a new home and we're going to lose it. And she lost her last house from her previous marriage. Now I'm putting her back through that again. So anyway, let's get back on this roller coaster ride. Hang on, put your seatbelt on. 2019, I restart. I get out of that mess. I recover. Solo agent, sell 67 homes my first year as a solo agent. To come back, number seven. And then 2020, sell another 70 homes as an individual agent. Come back, number eight. You know, even during COVID, I'm almost done. 2020, we buy our dream lake house. Come back, number nine. Woohoo! We're living at the lake. We're fixing the thing up. COVID hit, but we are having just great income. Everything's going well. I'm back on my own. I'm doing my thing. And then 2021, I'm coaching over 200 business professionals one-on-one. -on -one. So guys, what was the final score? 10 on comeback, 4 on setback. So sometimes those setbacks really make us look like we're really having a rough thing. And, if, and really, it was you guys today having this topic that I realized the comebacks are really outweighing the setbacks. And so here's a visual I want to give you. If you picture, draw a squiggly line straight across a piece of paper. That's the roller coaster ride. You got your ups, you got your downs, you got your ups, you got your downs. Now, turn your page at a 45 degree angle, making that zig, that squiggly line go up. And what this is uh, something I just saw this last week. That even though there's setbacks, you're actually ahead of where you were at before the last setback. So you're you're on a roller coaster ride, but we're going up, 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 because we're learning every time and learning from our mistakes and doing all that stuff. So man, I just had to get that all out. Hopefully, I didn't eat up too much stage time, guys. Hope you enjoyed that uh, little fun ride there. Brad, that was that, that that was fantastic because the reality is life is ups and downs, right? And the reality is that everybody thinks that that your success or my success or anybody's success, it's a straight line from point A to point B. The reality of it is, and again, going back to posts and memes and things, we see that, you know, people think it's from here to there, but there's twists and squiggles and, 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 and falls and dips and, you know, scraped knees and cracked heads and, you know, suffering and pain along the way. People only see, and social media has made that even more so, people only see the highlight reels. They don't see the pain. People aren't always sharing uh, the, the, the difficult moments uh, because success is a series of of, 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 of missteps and mistakes and it's just that the successful people don't lose enthusiasm in between those mistakes and that's how you get from point a to point b through all the difficult through all through all that challenge through all of that pain um so listen i that, that was amazing um and you know and, and anyone that's on the stage and in the audience in this room right now and everyone period we've all had setbacks all of us have had setbacks and we've all had comebacks um you know, we've all got problems, and problems aren't problems; they're challenges. They're opportunities to grow. And the, the, as 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 I've heard from one of my mentors many times, is you know the problem that most people have is that they think that they shouldn't have any problems. That's the biggest problem people have. They think they shouldn't have any problems, and the reality is, problems are a sign of life. You know, if you just like you were you were talking about, Brad, you know that squiggly line. If you think about a heartbeat, it goes up, it goes down, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. The reality is if there's no peaks and valleys, you're full. All right, it'll set an alarm. The, the reality is if there's no peaks and valleys, you're freaking dead, right? Problems are a sign of life. That gave you that permission to like keep going. Oh man, I really appreciate you asking that honestly, because 2015, you know, you, you, when you lose a spouse, you have a lot of friends and some people think you should probably be miserable for the rest of your life. And other people think you should move on. And if you do it too fast or you do it too slow and all this judgment and, and stuff can run through your head. So honestly, Michelle, my training to be a coach for 10 years prior to that happening, me being a business coach was actually God's way of saying, I'm going to put you through a training that's going to allow you to handle what's about to happen because I already know it's going to happen in 2015. And I say that because there's one particular day where I literally remember walking into my living room and I kind of did the nest tea plunge. I threw my arms up and I just fell backwards onto the couch. 
And I just laid there and thought, man, I mean, I, I am too old. This was my second marriage. There, I'm, it's too late. There, there's no way I'm going to have another shot at this. And I'm telling you what, my coach brain kicked in and I heard a voice say, what do you tell all your clients when stuff happens to them, when their kids are sick for a week? And you always said, well, what are you going to, I mean, did you call your bills and tell them to, you know, not send you any bills this week because you got to stay home with the kids or, you know, all the setbacks that I've dealt with other people dealing. And I just heard my own voice. And it's like, you got a daughter in high school that's got to get to college. And she just lost her mom too. And you're a single provider. And it literally took maybe five, six seconds and I was up and I just went. And it wasn't, I'll, I'll tell you, this is important because I didn't just act like it wasn't there. I didn't just pretend it didn't happen. My brain said, you got to move on, dude. I mean, you have got a daughter to take care of. And, and here's the best part. Sonia would want of you all to enjoy life to the absolute maximum fullest. She would not want it, it. She would come back and haunt us if we all sat around and cried and moped for months and months and years and years. So that was my wake up call. I really appreciate you asking that because that is just a realization that you got to you got to get up and go or you're going to miss that next opportunity, you know. So thank you for asking. Yeah, you're, you're welcome, and thank you for sharing that. I saw Jill had her mic open. Jill, did you want to say something before we go to Glenn? I was just clapping. I just love what everybody was saying. This is great. I'm just clapping. Yeah, me too. So thank you, Coach Corn, for answering. Which is Glenn. Go for a minute. Oh.